Many people would say we find our identity in our story, our place of birth, sex, ethnicity, family, education, work life, travels, triumphs, tragedies and influences. But as Christians we discover that we are part of a much bigger story than just our own life story. Genesis 3 tells the story of how human beings rejected God. This is a big part of our story and it has a big effect on our sense of identity. You see, we all have a cursed identity. Listening to the snake in verses 4 and 5, Eve and then Adam turned away from God thinking they could have the place of God. Though they were made to reflect God, they wanted to be God. That changed the course of humanity. There was no going back. We inherited their decision. It's what the Bible calls sin. We make the same decision for ourselves. We inherit the original sin. It is part of our makeup from birth. We are made to reflect God, but we want to be God. We want to be powerful. We want to be clever. We, we want to be looked up to. We want to be our own boss. We want to be the masters of our own destiny. We want to get the praise for our talents. We want to get the glory for our achievements. We want to decide what is good for us. We want to decide what is right and wrong for ourselves. We want to be free to do what we want to do. You know, the number one reason people don't believe in God is that they don't want to believe. Why don't they want to believe in God? Because they would have to hand him the crown. And they want that for themselves. We want to be our own gods. It's part of our identity. It's our cursed identity. And it pollutes or stains our God-given identity. You know when you accidentally put a red sock in the whitewash and everything comes out pink? That's like what happened uh, to our God-given ident identity. It's been stained with sin. And there are still lots of good things. You know, we can be funny, charming, good-looking, inventive, sporty, uh, lots of other things. But even the best, even the very best of ourselves is tainted by sin. So we can't assume that what we are like and how we understand ourselves is how God intended us to be. That's a really difficult thing for us to deal with. When Adam and Eve ate the fruit of the tree, verse 7, they made clothes. They were suddenly aware of their nakedness. They felt exposed. They felt shame. They were messed up, but they wanted to be accepted. And they launched the fashion industry. Well, nothing says more about our desire to be accepted than the clothes we wear. Nothing says more about who we think we are than the clothes we wear. Nothing says more about the confusion and anguish about identity that some people are struggling with every day of their lives than the clothes they wear. We are all messed up, but we want to be accepted. We want to be accepted because God made us for relationship with him and with each other. We bear the image of God so we want to be loved and accepted. But we are cursed by sin. So we desire to define our own identity and glorify ourselves. I want to be accepted as I am. But the third person I think I am is not the person I should be and is not acceptable to God. Thankfully, God had a plan to make us acceptable to him. It's in his curse on the snake in verse 15. God promised that one day a woman would give birth to someone who would reverse the curse of sin. This is the first promise of Jesus. Jesus is at the centre of the big story. In fact, it's really all about him. Jesus came as a human being. The Son of God came as a human being. He had no sin in him at all. If he had any sin in him, 
he couldn't have taken our sin on him and taken it away. He bore our cursed identity, even though he was the perfect son of God. When we trust in Jesus and become Christians, this is our story. We become part of God's big story. We get a new identity. Actually, a restored identity. We are identified completely with Jesus.